We're live. All right. All right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, here we are. Uh, welcome, welcome to the the basement cult podcast. It's a real thing now. Yeah, the very first episode. And uh, it's it's gonna be super low quality because we're fucking poor. Podcast. Yep. And uh, so, so uh, three of us here. We, it's a uh, mean. Yeah. Here in, uh, so. Yeah. So and we should all probably introduce ourselves and say like. Let's go first. Uh, uh, Lucas, you go first. Uh, okay. Well, um, I'm Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Belleville, Wisconsin. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Say like if you do any Lucas, uh, what do you do, Lucas? Um, what do you do? Uh, I uh, play in an extreme metal band called Matterath. And uh, and you uh, you do all the cassettes. And I help make the cassettes for the label. I mean, you literally do like everything for those. Till today. Today. Till today. First Till today. Edition. Yes, my, and I guess that's a good segue into me. I'm Jared, and I'm the vocalist for said Matherath band. And... And Jared's from Belleville, too. Yeah. And uh, me and Jared are here in Belleville, and all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is Mr. Patrick Swegler. Yeah, it's me. And I'm also from Belleville, I just live in Milwaukee. So, and that's the reason that everything sounds like complete shit, because if we were all in the same room, we would just all use microphones and plug it into an interface, but instead we're using Bandicam to record me Skyping these fucking idiots on Facebook Messenger. So, it's going to be like super lo-fi and super black metal, really true, cold Norwegian yeah. blackened podcast. <laughs> Is that our genre, black and white? Yes, yeah. lo-fi. So, so yeah. So this is the Basement Cult podcast. We basically started this whole thing because we all played in bands and we all liked our friends' bands and stuff. So we're like, oh, wouldn't it be neat if we just started doing like cassette only, you know, real physical releases for our friends' bands? Because we thought cassettes are really fucking stupid. Why don't we just spend a bunch of money making cassettes for a bunch of people who don't have cassette decks or listen to them? Because we're smart businessmen. That is a very good, very good description. And uh, so, let's uh, not forget to mention uh, uh, the way we... Um, well, I guess we, we've all known each other for quite a while. Um, yeah, you know, since, you know... Forever. Yeah. I think the first time I ever met you, Lucas, was like when I was in fourth grade. So. <laughs> and like it was third grade where me and you, Patrick, started being like really good friends. Good friends because we like to watch wrestling. Because we like to watch wrestling and we happen to be in the same class. Yeah. And then. Uh, um. Yeah. But really, it all it all really happened in high school. Like for real, though. Yeah. Well, definitely. yeah. For like, yeah. Um, uh, the, the Skating and Barbs is a, uh, yeah. important part. All of our bands are shitty bands. <laughs> Basically, for context, we're from, so Belleville, Wisconsin is like a, a town of 2,000 people in, like, south of the capital, Madison, Wisconsin. So, it's, like, totally isolated from people, and there's nothing to fucking do. So, like, you just kind of have, like, a group of friends 
that you've just known for like 20 years, and that's about it. So, and for all of us, that just happened to be a bunch of people who liked, you know, styles of music that the other kids and the people we knew did not like. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Basement Cult is, so what is Basement Cult, Lucas? What is it? Let the people know. What uh, is Basement Cult? I feel for anybody that um, has contacted our Facebook page, which isn't a lot of people, but whoever may be interested in uh, what Basement Cult is, a lot of people, um, I think, don't know it's actually a record label, uh, so to speak. Um, it is like just basically, uh, we're just kind of like distributing our friends' bands at the moment. Um, we haven't really like wanted to branch out too much yet because we just don't really have the resources. But um, yeah, it's a label and it's just kind of like uh, a collective of all the bands that we want to kind of uh, get music out for and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, and it's like, it's a label, but it's also like we put on shows. You know, we we like sponsor shows, and we obviously like. I guess now there's this podcast thing, and we've got a YouTube channel that we're gonna try and be active on, and you know, try and create interesting content for. Like, it's it's like a label, but it's more just kind of like a bunch of people who got together and decided that we liked our shitty little music scene we created and wanted to kind of document it and preserve it. In some way, even if it, you know, even if it means like only, you know, 50 people will ever know, you know, yeah. just for the sake of that. For us, you know, it's like, um, uh, it, it's just kind of cool just to kind of create something from, um, uh, you know, not, uh, really having too much, like, yeah, I mean, like. I mean, even back in, like, high school, like, we always did ha- kind of have that DIY ethic. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's just us trying to kind of bring that DIY ethic into our distribution process and, like, all of this. Like, instead of, you know, just going to the usual spots of, like, trying to find, like, you know, recruiters for labels and whatnot, trying to go all around and just you know do it yourself and mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. really, at least that's how i view basement cult yeah. being kind it, of just yeah bullshit let's do it ourselves mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's like it's it's like it, it you know i guess it's like a label that is it's it's not ran by like just one specific person you know like that was a big thing i think that was present is um is like it's like Anybody can help on it, out with it. It's like not just meant for like, uh, like one person runs it all, or runs the show. It's just whoever wants to help out or whatever. You know, it's like it's very open source kind of way. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's like it's just kind of like no one really owns Basement Cult. Like it's not a thing, really, like a company or like it's just like a collective of people who. Yep just kind of all work together to make things happen. And, like, it's just a bunch of, you know, it's like our friends and everyone just kind of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Do you want to, like, maybe we should start talking about, like, the the ground, from the ground up, like, what was, like, the context in which we started this? Like, what is the Belleville, the Belleville music scene? Belleville Rock City, Ah. you know? Right, well, and into that. You know, where did that come from? Uh, like, I think if you like, uh, I don't know. There was a, there was like in Belleville, no one in like no young people. Like, there's a music scene. So basically, there's a whole music scene in like southern Wisconsin that exists outside of Madison, but it's a bunch of like you know hillbilly bands, mm-hmm. which is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think we all kind of like hillbilly trash music every once in a while, but in there was no one playing anything like punk rock or metal or anything like that or hardcore yeah. or anything like that except for there's like Torco Tag in the mid 2000s yeah. or something there's a band from Belleville that was like a ska core band and it was like fucking amazing and I saw them once 
But where would you guys say like the Belleville mu- the Belleville scene really started? Like, what was that first thing? Uh, I think the Skank and Barbs Definitely. would be a good thing to mention. The Skank and Barbs. I, what about Anti Super Circle though? That's, that's, that's what I was going. Yeah. I was going to bring up. Yeah, I think it really started with Anti Super Circle, even though. You know, say what you will about that band. They sucked. What? They sucked. I mean, <laughs> say what you will, it was the start of start of the Belvin music scene. Yeah, it's like I um I didn't know like anybody else that had like bands in our school except for like like you guys. Like there like I didn't I, there was no one else I knew that was that had a band like in Belleville. Um Anti Seber Circle. Yeah, Anti Seber Circle. Um Anti Seber Circle is just like a band that I was a part of in high school. It was just really just a really shitty pop punk cover band, like the kind of pop punk cover band that played Basket Case and Damn It and some Forty One songs and Fall Out Boy, and it was really cringy and bad. But then, uh, like we played like some punk rock stuff, I guess. Like there were we had shows, you know. You had shows at the bowling alley in town you guys came to those shows, so, like, what was that like, you know, like, seeing people you went to high school with playing in a band and playing punk, even if it meant, you know, shitty pop punk? Uh, at least for me, I just, I thought it was cool because, like, it was finally just kind of, like, you know, it was something to do because, like you said, there was nothing in this town to do and, like, you could be like, hey, Patrick's band's playing a show, uh, Saturday or whatever, like, let's go fucking see that, and I'll be the only one moshing, and people will look at me that- like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I um, saw you guys twice, I think. Uh, yeah, that's like I think I kind of like uh, first started like getting like uh, to know you guys a little better, like in high school. So like. Uh, the first time I saw you guys, I think was at the, I think it was the first Gang of Barb show, and the last uh, Anti Seber Circle show, right? Was it? Was that? So that was the only time you'd ever seen us. And then Are you sure that post prom. Okay, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And freshman year post prom for me, I guess. Um, I think I only missed one of your shows, and that was the one at uh, Cole's house. Yeah, our singer had a house party that no one came to, and it was super lame. And I think we played What's My Age Again by Blink-182 at that show to switch shit up. Oh, nice. Um, you know, I, I, can you, so, and that was, those shows were before any of us had gone to, like, a, a punk show or anything like that before. Was it? Yes, because we, the first time we went to a show, Jared, was, like, our sophomore year of high school. It, I remember like, it was our sophomore year, but, like... anti Seber Circle started my freshman year. Oh, I guess, yeah, that was the... Yeah. We did those shows before we ever went to a real, like, actual punk show. So, like, it was DIY before we had ever went to see actual bands. Wow, yeah, actually, wow. You're not wrong. Which is really sad, because we sucked total ass. But anyway, we played, we sucked, our singer never, he had rhythm troubles, I guess, so we were like, we're going to break up, we lasted like two years or whatever, and our last show, we started a ska band, Jared and I did, and we were like, oh, we'll just open up for anti Seber Circle on their last show, and I think that was really, like, really where, like, real shit started to happen. Like, kicked off, like, this, more of, instead of it just being kind of like a... Just kind of an exclusive thing to like you. I think that kind of kicked off like this more, ex- more like more people coming into the the scene, if you'll say that. Well, yeah, and we had like the scoffing going on. So that's like seven. We had like seven people in the band initially, yeah. and um, you know we had that first show, and people liked it apparently because you know ska is very accessible. You know, third wave ska is very accessible style of music. Yeah. So we played a lot. Eventually, Lucas joined the band and played trumpet. And um, I still remember the first time. Was, I think like I was helping like you guys take down, and then like uh, like you were like, "Hey, Lucas, come over here." I'm like, "Oh, oh okay." And he's like, "Hey, man, 
you want to play trumpet? I'm like, oh, sure. Because I was, I mean, I'm, uh, that was like my first ever band I was in, so. It was cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, we played a lot of shows with that band. Like, we, that was the first band we did where we actually got out of, like, our hometown. Like, we started playing in Madison and stuff and playing shows there. So that was, like, I think a big deal for us. Yep. And people started coming to our shows, too. Like, it wasn't just, like, our friends who would come to see our band. So, like, that was, like, the beginning of the actual scene. But they got to the point where, like, that band happened. We, like, released a demo and we were all going off to college by the time uh, that band was about to end, and so we had our last show. We made a lot of friends along the way, you know, like the dudes in Mile 134 from Argyle and Courtesy of Tim from Madison. You know, we had this big last show where we played with all of our friends' bands, and that was something that the Skankin' Barbs did too, was, like, we brought in bands from other areas to come play with us in Belleville. Yeah. And, you know, like... We actually had some pretty packed shows, you know, at the bowling alley where all those shows were at. So, like, like that last Skank and Barb show, there was, like, 100 people there, which doesn't seem like a lot, really, but it, you know. Yeah. But for us to have, like, 100 people at a show was pretty fucking mind-blowing, I would say. I remember... For a, a bunch of people who couldn't play their instruments. I remember, like, when My 134, like... that the, I remember the day... That my one three four first like came to town and like oh, yeah. we didn't know that like the show was even going on, or that the. But then like Scott's like, like texted you and is like, hey. This band needs like, a crowd. So like. Oh yeah. Went and like. I like, it's just weird like that like these people like we've not I like. I feel like I've known them for, like, a really long time. Mm -hmm. Like, that we just kind of met them out of the blue on one day just because, like, they were playing. And then they, we got them to play more shows here and, like, just started, like, a friendship. Like, mm -hmm. I always thought that was kind of cool. And same with the courtesy of Tim Dudes, you know? Like, that was... We met them at, a, at the Masked Intruder show, right? Yeah, it was... But, like, and then, like, we started the conversation because they were also at the, uh, the Real Big Fish Less and Jake show. And, like, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, that was, like, we met those dudes and they play in a ska band and, you know, Josh, the dude who recorded our demo, the Skank and Barb's demo, he played in a deathcore band called Farron. We got them to come out and play. And, um... You know, who else played? anti Seber Circle got back together for a one-off show at the last Skank and Barb show. Which, without our singer, so I sang. And this is, like, really where, like, um, the real shit started to happen. Because, like, when the Skank and Barbs ended, it's kind of like, um, you know, like, you know the Swedish death metal scene in the early 90s where, like, everyone was in all the same bands? Yeah. Like, Carcass and Nihilist and Entombed and Carnage were, like, all, like, the same dudes mm -hmm. to some extent. Like, had some shared members. It's kind of like that, because, like, now, after the Skank and Barb split up, everyone went to college, and, like, we all kind of started different things. Yeah. So, like, that's where, like, I think the real shit began. That's kind of where we're at now, almost, you know, right before Basement Call happened. Because we all started doing our own shit and our own music. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, um... But, like... For, like, the... St you, Patrick, were the one who really started Basement Cult, mm -hmm. like... So, like, where would... Where would you say the idea of this... The, of Basement Cult began? It just it just came back to me. So, so, get this. So, we went off to college, and I moved to Milwaukee to go to college at UW-Milwaukee. And, Jared, you moved to St. Louis mm -hmm. and went to college there. And then I was booking a show in Belleville over winter break, and it was going to be my new band, anti Seber Circle. Basically, we reformed without our old singer, and we changed our name to Trivial Pleasure, and uh, we got another guitar player, and um, we were booking this show, and I was like, you know what would be cool? If we made it look like the show was sponsored by something. So I put Basement Cult Productions on the poster, to make it look like it was like an actual thing. Yeah. 
So I think it started off as just like what I was going to call myself like as a booking shows guy. Like that's what the thing was going to be called. And um, who did I have on that show? It was like a big comeback show. Like all the bands we liked got, you know, it was Mile 134 headlined. And that show was fucking awesome. Because they, uh, we had like a mosh pit and shit. And they played Micromanager and everyone started fucking shit up. Um, but that was where it really began, I think, because, like, this is, like, where the Belleville scene, like, is really started to come, and there's, like, different bands coming in. It's, like, now we've had shows where, you know, where we've got, you know, like, what, we had all kinds of bands come through, and now we've got everyone that's in the Skank and Barbs is playing in a different band now, it seems. Like, it's, like, Carl and I, who were both, Carl played trumpet and I played drums, we went and started another band, like a punk band, and then you guys started Matter Wrath. Mm-hmm. So, and then and it's Skyler, one of our friends out. Okay, then, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, he also <laughs> is in Mather. All right, we'll continue. He's also in Matheraf, and just and Patrick. I'm not sure if you work have been working on much of it, but you said you you're like trying to get like a power violence sort of thing. Yeah, I I'm still like. I'm trying to, like, all of us do, uh, like, our own kind of, like, music on the side, and I guess, like, I want to do a power violence thing, but I just, I'm fucking lazy. I play in two bands, so I got enough shit happening right now. I mean, I have, I've I've got, like, two different, like, paths I want to do with, like, my side projects, and, like, it's weird, like, do I go for more grind or just more just straight cyber grind? I don't know. You can probably mix them both together, like, have, like, Probably. some really disgusting, like, it's, like, putrid pile, but it's also, like, disgusting and really, uh, like, noise and electronic influenced. i they'd probably do that, yeah. I mean, yeah, there'd be some way to do it, I'm sure, but... So, what was, what, what prompted us to get Basement Cult Records going, though? Like, was that when the Moonbog tapes started surfacing? Uh, well, I think, well, was the, was the, uh, Trivial Pleasure demo actually, like, on Basement Cult at all? Was that technically a... I'm not sure. The Trivial Pleasure demo, we started the band in January 2018. The demo came out two months after it, but it never got a physical release. So, like, I don't think we released it on any label. I'd have to check what the band camp said, but I just think it's just, like, a self-released thing. I think I wanted to wait to actually re- re- put something up because, like, that was more um, more professional sounding than that. Cause that demo totally sucks. I remember we listened to it at work once. So, yeah, actually, you, we, you, yeah, we, you listened to it at work. Yeah, yeah, we actually like listened to like some of our like friends' bands at like just work one time. It was kind of, is it actually kind of fun? <laughs> like with other people? No, no like, one really could hear it, but. Me and Lucas just kind of listen to, like, stuff. Because, like, we're in the same department and it's only us, really. So, like, and we have a computer, so we just play it through the uh, speakers. Yeah, and we there. just l- we'll listen to uh, lots of stuff. Lots of different stuff. Jared will, like, sometimes uh, Jared will play, like, uh, uh, some gore grind stuff. And then, like, people will walk by and they're like, oh. what is yeah, we were listening to a gorephobic nosebleed, and someone's like, Jesus, it sounds like someone's, like, dying yeah, or something. Yeah, and then, like, like well, because, like, uh, <laughs> this was Ark, um, and Cats Cats was, uh, uh, Cat Cats was singing, and, like, you know how, like, fucking raw her voice is? Yeah. And, like, a guy was just, like... Dude, is he like streaming at like the top of his lungs? I'm like, uh, no, she is. Uh, yeah. The- <laughs> no, and there's like, he's like, there's no way that's a woman. And so I had to look up like, I'm like, all right, here's Gorephobic Nosebleed. This is the vocalist right here. Yeah. Yeah. Her vocals are so just gnarly as fuck. But so you guys, you guys listened to that, but that that wasn't really Basement Cult. Like the first official thing released on Basement Cult was that uh, Moonbog EP, yeah. which was actually fairly recent. And so, like that was the stuff that I think really is the first stuff we've done. You know, to put out. You know, fans we're friends with. 
because we've released three things from the Moonbog dudes. So, like, you know, those the EP, the full length, and the split with Vacuous. So, um, and there's like, those are like the first things. There's a lot of plans to release other bands too, like yeah. tapes. Um, yeah, so like, what we've got, what do we have coming up? I play in a band in Milwaukee called Dislocation. It's like a, it's like a skate punk band. It's like crossover thrash and skate punk kind of coming together. And uh, we have our debut EP coming out on February 23rd. So that's like two weeks from now. I don't know when this podcast is going to be aired, but we've got that coming out. And um, what else is happening? You, Matt Rath, you guys are going to be in the studio to do a demo soon, right? Yeah, actually, I think um, the talk is we were thinking about doing a full length, actually. Um, cause we have quite a bit of songs. We were thinking maybe we should just make an album, but there's still kind of like we're still trying to figure out because, uh, you know, it's like when yeah. you're doing an album, like, that's, like... Yeah, and we're also just, like, with the band, we're just trying to get, like, coordination of, mm-hmm. like, do we all think it would be good to do an album? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, would, like, what, you know, we're yeah. just trying to... It's hard to, like, communicate with all of the members mm-hmm. and get, like, on the same page. Because, yeah, some of us have, are, like, some of us are fairly like-minded with, like, that kind of... But, you know, like, it's, like, there's, like, different, you know, it's... It's different all around sometimes, and it's just kind of like we, uh, um, Jared actually came up with this really cool con- idea for a concept album, um, and uh, we were thinking like maybe like if the songs we had would fit in it, because yeah. they, they've the all the songs are pretty different, like th- like the writing process has changed quite a bit from like the first song mm-hmm. to like where we are now. now, so we don't know like it's maybe we'll do an EP or a demo or. Maybe an album. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of up in the air right now. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of up in the air. But you're, you're going to be in the studio at some point this year. Well, yeah, we'll probably be forward with um, uh, Patrick room- Patrick's roommate. Uh, yeah, we're playing. Joe. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, the direct hit song sounded really cool. Yeah, dude, those uh, recordings were pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, and I guess a uh, trivial pleasure is finally, finally going to be doing something this year too. So I don't know what that means. It might be a, like a four-song EP. It might be like a single, but it'll be something. Do we just don't have any money because we never play. So DIY man. Do you have like an idea of like when you might be like heading to the studio or springtime? We're probably gonna do it. I, I'm really, like, busy because uh, I, I got college and I'm dislocation's very busy right now because, you know, we got, like, I got three shows coming up in the next, like, month, which for me is busy, you know, trying to do college and shit and have a job. So probably in the springtime, I imagine that, like, the we'll probably have something out for the fall or late summer to be released. And I can't wait for it because the new TP songs are sick. Thanks, dude. Yeah. They're like they're very um they're just like prop they're like propagandi ripoffs at this point especially the new one that no one has heard except for like you Lucas the I'm, new one is a straight propagandi ripoff I wouldn't necessarily say propagandi ripoff but it's very apparent it's, it, that it, it, I listen to propagandi when I hear that propagandi influence yeah well you know like the thing with my band is none of us listen to the same kinds of music. Except for, like, the people who are most like-minded in the band are Carl and I. So, like, I sing and play lead guitar, and Carl plays bass. And Carl and I both listen to, like, a lot of punk. You know, just, like, general, just kind of, like, all over the place. But, like, Colin is very into metalcore and, like, a lot of, um, like, 2000s metal and deathcore and whatever. Mm -hmm. So the songs, like, a lot of the songs are a little more, like, riff-oriented in some ways. And, um... Cody is just all across the board. Like, I don't even know what he listens to. Like, he listens to musical theater and Wilco. And sh- You're good. Start from Pink Floyd again. Sorry. Pink Floyd. Uh, he listens to Pink Floyd and Between the Buried and Me. And he's, like, very all over the place with what he listens to. So it's a lot of different things kind of coming together. And usually what that means is it's, like, it's kind of fast and melodic. So, like, Carl wants the shit to be fast I really like melodic stuff, so we have the melody. Colin likes the heavy riffs, so the heavy riffs are in there. And Cody likes uh, 
parts of songs that like they kind of get stripped down and there's like builds and stuff. So the dynamic contrast that happen in the songs are usually because like Cody wants stuff like that to happen. So unfortunately, we have to use a lot of the clean channel, which is not common in punk. <laughs> but I'm cool with that. But I have to buy a food switch for my amp because I can't access the clean channel as well with my fingers, you know, on the fucking amp when I'm trying to play guitar. You know what, man? Like, uh, my amp, you have to get, like, a specific foot switch for it, and it was, like, 90 bucks because it doesn't have, like... The yeah, so it's, like, how many different channels do you have on that? Three? Yeah, it's three. You got, like, a clean and then, like, a gain one and gain two? Yeah. And then is there a boost on it as well? Yeah, there's an effects loop and stuff, and... But, yeah. It's... Yeah, I have the exact same thing with mine, and I don't have a foot switch either. <laughs> so, right now, it's just kind of, like... Dislocation does not use the clean channel at all, so I can pretty much just like play distorted the whole time. If I want to use a clean channel, though, I'll I play a Les Paul, so I can switch to the neck pickup and turn the volume down, and it kind of is like a clean channel, but it's not full sounding like a real clean is. Um, what else was there that we should talk about, Jared? That we haven't talked about yet. We talked about kind of like Basement Cult. Uh. Uh, what about what else do we want to release? Like, is there anyone else who's putting out music this year? Uh, Maya One Thirty Four is heading into the studio, I think, to record a full length album. Word on the street is, yeah, yeah, but like, and uh, they usually for anyone who's they usually, uh, for anyone who's like into God Smack and Alice in Chains and shit, you know, but mixed with like some newer shit, like mixed with like Lamb of God, Gojira, kind of like heaviness, yeah. I mean, but they usually like self-release their stuff. Too, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. Well, yeah, but like, and I mean, they do. A we don't have to like. I don't want to own their songs or anything. I just want to make their tapes because I want to own a Mile One Thirty Four tape. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we could just like, bootleg them for ourselves, but I feel like it'd be cool. Like people, some people think cassettes are cool. I think cassettes are cool. I think they're. Cool. Why did we choose to go with cassettes and like not CDs? You know, they're what what about cassettes made us want to? You know, well, I think they're just, the, like there's just such a big kind of like uh, I think like history with like DIY sets, you know, yeah. like yeah, like tape trading and stuff exactly. like that. It's just kind of yeah. really cool, like um, like that's how like a lot of like those underground bands got around back in the day was doing, like tape trading and before their mm. movies. And like you could Yeah, and you and you've heard you've heard the stories about stuff like that with like um like the Metallica demo. Yep. You know, going around San Francisco and people hearing that and like that's you know, that's kind of what happened then. Mm -hmm. And also cassettes, that was like the some of the first pirated music. You know, like using your cassette deck to pirate what's playing on the radio. And you know, and companies were fucking scared of that shit. So like that's uh it's like a real thing. Like my I was talking to my dad and he used to listen to like the college radio station in the 80s, and so he's got tapes and tapes and tapes of just, like, you know, random crap. Like, that's how he got turned on to the Dead Kennedys and bands like that was hearing them and, like, bootlegging them. So I've heard tapes where, you know, they played Holiday in Cambodia on college radio from, like, 80, you know, 81. And, like, that's the OG, that's the first priority of music. And I think that, like, says something about the culture, you know. It's, like, it's about that part of that is, like, the DIY stuff, you know trying to make the music yourself, produce and distribute it yourself. And cassettes are super cheap yep. to do, mm -hmm. like, in a way that's actually, like, I think cassettes are easier than CDs because CDs, you really have to think about the labeling on the CD, yeah. too. And that is a whole nother fucking beast. Yeah, well, the only thing about, like, is, like, the, the only way I think that the downside of cassettes is, like, if you're doing DIY, you have to dub them all yourself. <laughs> that is the big... Yeah, you have to dub them all. But it's it's not so bad. No, it's not. Because, like, you just kind of press... Re you press record on the on the tape deck, and then you kind of press play on whatever source you're playing the uh, thing on into the tape deck, and then you just kind of sit there and wait for it to be done. And it's, like, it's not, like, super tedious or anything, but it's time-consuming as hell. Yeah. Especially when you're dubbing, like, the mo when we dubbed the, the Moonbog full-length album, you know, every that whole album's, like, 54 minutes or something. So, like, dubbing it every single fucking time, 54 minutes. And how many of those did we make? Like, 15? Uh, no, it was probably, well, maybe maybe a little over 10. 
a little over ten. I never really kept. I guess we wanted to see how they would sell first before, but we sold quite a few of them. I think we sold like ten, which for us is good. So I mean, but yeah, it's tedious as hell. Yeah. But I think like the um when I go to like these DIY hardcore shows and stuff, a lot of bands only have cassettes. Like they don't even do CDs anymore because people like analog music, but they but it's a easier format sometimes than vinyl, you know, because... Yeah. And uh, there's something about, like, cassettes have their own aesthetic that's kind of charming and fun, too, so... I, like, actually, just recently, like, I'm not huge in the black metal or anything, but, like, I, I'll go down, occasionally go down in St. Louis and just, like, go to the plant score records and just raid their cassette place and find, like, really cool bands and like I popped one in the other day and it was black metal but like I think just with that analog sound just coming through like my speakers was just I'm like I actually understand like why you really like black metal now Lucas you really felt the music you know I really did yeah, I mean, slot. that's like that's like the difference sometimes between listening, you know, on a CD or listening on your phone versus like listening on vinyl on a stereo. You know, it's a different experience. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. Yeah. What else was there to talk about? Um. Well, we're gonna. Was there anything left? On there? We're gonna start doing uh online store stuff with uh. Yes. Tapes. The online store is coming soon, right? So are we gonna do that all on Bandcamp? I think for the moment, because uh, like that's it's such a n nice medium to use, because like then we won't have to make like, a website and yeah, yeah, at least. But yeah, we're gonna get the uh, Moonbog and um, Vacation splits up. It's gonna be a very very limited first like pressing. There's I'm gonna like we're gonna put like five up and just see how they sell. Be yeah, fun. I mean, and what like that that uh, second Moonbog album? What how many downloads were like over three hundred downloads? Yeah, there was around there, but um, the uh, someone has to want to buy a physical copy of it. If three hundred people plus downloaded the record, well, it made a lot of difference because um, if you if you let the uh, if you put something on Bandcamp and have like people pay for whatever they want, or they can have it for free, people will download it a lot more. But the only problem mm -hmm. is you only get like two hundred downloads a month from Bandcamp. So if you use up all your downloads, Bandcamp will like reset. And then it'll like charge people, it'll, like charge people if they want to get it. So like, yeah, like, like with the um, once I I just decided I just like we'll just put the digital stuff for like a dollar. So then we don't have to worry about running out of downloads. And obviously the say like the downloads went down. A little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but what are the, are there any numbers like what are the figures for like the downloads on the split? How many do you know how many people downloaded it? Uh, there's there's only been a couple because like I charged right away for it like yeah it, it was like just so we wouldn't have to worry about the like download limit or whatever but yeah it's like they like a couple people have bought it already which is cool because it's um it'll, it'll be nice that like people like vacations will be a little bit more uh uh debut you know and like we agree. yeah and like the, the and like the vacuous debut is like it's a split so i mean you get like moon bog and that release is very um like atmospheric, you know, it's different than like some of the other stuff. I really thought, um, like, not that the other stuff isn't atmospheric, but like the ambient level has been like cranked to fucking ten on that side. On that side, you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh shit! Sorry, I dropped my phone. Um, yeah. I don't know. So like, I'm I'm really stoked because like we'll have the dislocation tapes out soon. You know, we're the the release show we're doing like we're playing a show at the X Ray Arcade, the brand new X Ray Arcade in Milwaukee, the very famous. <laughs> um, by uh, owned by Nick Woods from Direct Hit, the Nick, which is like one of the fucking coolest bands from Wisconsin or just in punk gen in general. That was what me like that was one of my first shows like my very second. That was like our first real punk show, right? Was Direct Hit? Yeah. Mhm. Mm 
So like that, and like direct hit and Mask Intruder. Yeah. So like that was a still one of probably like my favorite show, one of them ever. Like top three favorite shows. Yeah, for sure. Same here. Um, so it's very cool to be you know to be able to like have Nick let us play there. Um, and we're playing with like we're playing with from parts and known from Texas, which is like a band that's just kind of like starting to gain traction in the punk scene. So like Texas. Yep, they, they they played at Fest last year, really? like the last few years. So they're like a band that like actually tours. So it's really really cool. So, and um, we're releasing the CDs there, so we're getting the CDs done by someone else. But I know like I asked the dudes in the band like, do you guys want to do tapes? Because like I wanted to do tapes. Like I didn't care if they said yes or not. I was gonna make tapes for Youth Control. The EP is called Youth Control. And um, yeah, you know. That's kind of it. We're going to do tapes for that, too. So those will be out on March 10th. We might have them up online before then, maybe, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's, like, all I've got to talk about for this episode, maybe. Unless, um, maybe... Is there anything else? Uh... No, I don't know. Anything happening in metal right now? Like, it looks like it's shaping up, like, what do you guys think? Like, it's the new year, like, it's February, um, and there's a lot of shit happening this year in metal and punk. There's like, are you guys excited about anything that's going to be happening? Because I'm very fucking excited about a lot of shit that's going down this year. Mm-hmm. Same here. I'm... Any records that you're super stoked about? Well, it's, because, like, there's some that are kind of still up in the air, like, like, that we don't know yet, because, like, supposedly there's going to be New Year's Year this year. Um, maybe New Mastodon. Um, maybe New Tool. <laughs> maybe if Jesus, Maynard's not if, if, being if, a... <laughs> heckin' Maynard James Keenan. I, I, I knew it. I knew it, like, the, the, it was going to be delayed again. Yeah, well, but that'd be really cool. If like that'd be super sick. We'll come out their album. Um, say I was kind of hoping. I was kind of hoping they were gonna wait ten thousand days to release their next album after the record ten thousand days. It's been like five thousand, so we need another like twenty years still. Yeah, but you know, fourteen. You know, like uh, Tool, like I think like ten thousand days came on like two thousand six. Yeah, something like that. Like everybody's like. Wants a new two album, but like System of a Down didn't come out with a new album since 2005. But that's probably, fucking true. They're probably not gonna release it anyone anytime soon. Which kind I of don't think System of a Down will ever release another album. Um, I think they just can't stand each other. Mm-hmm. Which kind of sucks. It, kind of it sucks. does suck. It but is. if System of a Down was to release a new album, do you think it would be good? Like as good as the the rest of their work? I was actually going to say that I think they ended it on probably the best note they mm-hmm. could possibly. Yeah, like they ended it on Hypnotize, right? Yeah, yeah that's my favorite from a Down album. That's my favorite album. But... That's my favorite record they did. Like, did this is a perfect album. Yeah, it really is. Not that the rest of their records aren't like fucking amazing, because like they don't have a bad album, uh-huh. as far as I'm concerned. And like, I think their first album is their weakest one, and that album is still a fucking classic. I, I agree. I, I totally agree. And you know, it's like. Uh, yeah, and then it's like toxicity was just like, like you know, it's like you still can listen to that record today, and it's like still just feels new, you know. Yeah. It's very, it's still fresh. Like that record is never not fresh. Um, or some other bands. Uh, uh you were saying uh, Sayor. Yeah, Sayor just say is, it? like is coming out with a new album. Yeah. Oh yeah, the atmospheric black metal band. That yeah. like full black metal, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. I know you really enjoy that band, so. Um. um what else is happening? There's a uh, there was a new Malevolent Creation album that just came out. I don't know if you guys listen to them or not. Hey, um, it's that called out. like the the Thirteenth something. Thirteenth Beast or something like that. Thirteenth Beast, yeah. I listened to it the other day because I enjoy that band a lot. So um, it's cool. You know, it's it's pretty like it's Malevolent Creation. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's kind of like when you listen to a new Cannibal Corpse album, and it's just like you know what you're getting into. Like, it might not be the most groundbreaking album, but it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be death metal and it's going to be fun. Yeah. So, um, Let's see, well, uh, it was a good album. It was fine. It's probably not going to be, like, my top ten in the year. I, I haven't listened to a whole lot of records this year that are, I'm super excited about yet. Um, I listened to, Jared, did you listen to the new A Pale Horse Named Death record? 
I have not. I really want to. Uh, I dude, it's fucking good. It's fucking good. I can imagine. I, I'm a really big fan of the Pale Horse Named Death, but like, I Lucas told me is like, yeah, they just released it. And I'm like, oh, and I just haven't gotten around to like listening to it yet. Yet. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh. This any, is- what about you, Lucas? What? Any albums that are happening that you're excited about? Um. There's a there's this new side project of I think. Either both of the guys or one of the guys in Blue Tows Nord is called uh, Jerusalem, and it's like this kind of uh, it's this album called Sublime. Um, it's like it's supposed to be like really cool, like industrial black metal stuff. That I like, I listened to a couple tracks from it, and it seems pretty cool. So that looks pretty neat. Um, but yeah, I really hope like we get like New Gorgier this year because like if it's like. I'm just really curious to see, like, what would happen after Magma, you know? Oh, yeah, and that record was so good. Yep. Um, Code Orange, hopefully. To... That'd be sick. Yeah, New Code Orange. New Code Orange. I'm sh- And new, new Code Orange, like, I can't wait for the follow-up to Forever because that album just was... And uh, New Full of Hell That's what is I'm coming out. About to say. Wearing the fucking Full of Hell t-shirt right now. So um, that band is super consistent with releases, just like Code Orange. You know, like Full of Hell puts something out like every year, even if it's just like a split or something. Their last so, one was like 2017, right? Yes, it was, but I think they did something last year. They did like a, a split with some band or whatever. They're always doing shit. Okay. Their work with um, The Body is like some of my favorite shit they've ever done. Yeah. Yeah, like the um, one collaboration. I think they've done a couple with them. I yeah, think. they do. You ever listen to their stuff they did with Mersbau? No, I haven't. Is that like that? I don't know. You guys listen to Mersbau at all? I, I I listen to some Mersbau. He's like probably the most famous noise artist. Yeah. I would think, right? Yeah, I. I have a few like. Gamer so. Pur- uh, Purian's pretty popular too, um, but yeah, that was really cool. Um, so new full of hell. Code Orange though, man. Like I've been saying it for fucking ever. Hardcore is going to be the next big trend in metal. And these, this is like the sound of the scene. So listen, listen to me here, you listeners. If you want to get rich and famous and sell out, go start a hardcore band because now you're going to be like millionaires. Because that's what the people in Code Orange. Did. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. But that's like deathcore. You know, like metalcore kind of went away. Deathcore is kind of going away. Gent is like kind of fading out too, which is great because I don't really like Gent. I like Mushuga. I don't like Gent. I yeah, I love Mashuga. Well, that's like totally different. I, well, I, I agree. Mishuga, I don't think well, Mishuga. that's the thing. A lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, they're, they're uh, they started gents," and I'm like, "Sure, they were like a really big influence for that like genre, but they really I, it was periphery." I would say, like when we think of what gent is, I think it's periphery. I, I, I yeah, I'd agree with that. And Jared is like the biggest Mashuga fan. In, yeah, Jared is like the biggest Mushuga fan I know. So he has like everything they've ever done. Northern Hemisphere. He even has like that obscure fucking like EP they did in like the eighties on vinyl. The original release. I know they just re-released it, which made the price just of that just in value just plummet. But you know. But you have the original. I have one. the original, and that's so, sick. Yeah. Mm. And uh, shipped to the U.S. from Sweden in a pizza box. Yes, it was. <laughs> And, um, I mean, I have all of their stuff on vinyl, however it's coming. Some of it's coming. Um, yeah, but yeah, new Mushuga, uh, Mushuga's releasing all their, like, later albums on vinyl, too, which is really cool. Yeah, they're they're redoing all the art, right? Uh, that, okay, here's, uh, Mushuga Insider Art. That art was already done, like, years ago. Go. When it was released in that that big box set, which I was like really yeah, weird. and like now they're like that's what thing I don't like about like nuclear blast is like advertising like ooh with redone art. It's like this was in the box set. Stop <laughs> advertising like it's like it's like kind of dishonest. It's like really like let's hype it up so more people spend money. Yeah, and well, the art is amazing. It's my favorite artist. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. It's like. You look it up on like fucking discogs or whatnot. It's his art's amazing and like 
I love the redone artwork. I just don't like how Nuclear Blast is like, hey, buy this because it's new. It's not new. It's been like done for years. Although, the <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's instead cool. of like, because the box was just like all clear vinyl, but now they have like some splatter, some marble, just a lot cooler like colors. Yeah. So like, so back to what I was saying though. Hardcore is the next trend in metal. Yes. Like, that's what's happening on... Like, you're seeing that happen with bands like Code Orange. You know, fucking... Like, this is why, man. They were nominated for a fucking Grammy. What fucking hardcore band has been nominated for a Grammy in the fucking history of forever? Well, just, no fucking hardcore band. And it, well, it's just kind of... Even if they didn't win it, which was total <laughs> bullshit because they should have won it. Yeah. But... I guess the what was it like best metal performance and they lost to Mastodon, which is totally like a fair band to lose it to because that record was also great. But Code Orange should have won because I think that record was like more groundbreaking. And I think like that record, like in the next ten years, we're gonna see a lot of bands coming up. Maybe like the next five years, even you know, mm-hmm. that are really kind of taking that to the next level. Like Harm's Way is getting pretty big. Vane is like a super small band but got a lot of press with their new record. Knocked Loose is really fucking huge right now, even though I hate that band. I, I do Arf, not care. There's, <laughs> there's thing or like, I don't even know if I can justify my hatred for that band. It's just kind of just like, it's so it's so warped to her to me. Oh yeah. That like it's just cringy. Um, but yeah, but Jesus Peace too. Jesus fucking Jesus Peace, man. There's just a ton of great bands doing shit. I I'm, I'm like so stoked on it. Yep. So. And, like, just the hardcore scene's been pumping, pumping out really great shit for the last, you know, fucking forever. So. Um, for, uh, going back to the question of, like, metal I'm excited for, um, El Vete, their new album, sounds just, at least the single they released, just sounds absolutely epic and, like, just awesome, just even with their whole new lineup, because a whole bunch of members left before, like, and they were before they released their uh, latest acoustic album in 2017. But like this new one, yeah. to be like metal again, and like it still sounds just you know folky as hell, melodic as hell. Yeah, I actually really like the really the heavy. song. Like I'm not really a, a big folk metal guy because like mm-hmm. really likes folk metal a lot. And I was like, that's pretty cool, you know. It was like I dug it. Uh, yeah. New Devin Townsend. Oh yeah, Devin Townsend. Luja, Deer, I'm excited for a while. Oh, Patrick, hopefully a new Swashbuckle album. Yes. They've been Yes, the- I've been waiting so long for the new Swashbuckle album. They they were in like the studio all last year, I know, and like they were mixing uh, stuff lately, and it's just I'm I'm ready for a new swashbuckle. You know, it's been a while. It's been long enough. Yeah. So there's like there's like a lot of great metal coming out this year. You can probably bet there's going to be a new Overkill album because they release an album every fucking year. So I'm sure there'll be a new Overkill record. I think they just released like new Megadeth. New Megadeth, yes. Megadeth, so that'll be another one too. Um, but yeah. And um, is there any other anything else? Any like metal shit that's coming? Is there gonna be like new Power Trip? There might be new Nails this year, hopefully. That'd Maybe. Be- uh, I'd love to have that. I'm just reading off some list of uh, Misery Index. <laughs> truly, I'm not sure if these are like concept albums. Uh, and. Skylar just messaged a group chat of new downfall of Gaia. Or uh, yep, yep. out today. So uh yeah. Uh Rod and Christ. Uh Whoa, yeah. I'm excited for that. I really like their last album. I know some people like were really didn't really like it, but I thought it was pretty rad. Um I, I haven't really listened to the new album too much. Um, <laughs> Jerry, are you waving your mom away? 
You dick. I have to move my car. <laughs> oh, Lucas. All right, should I call you back in a little bit? Move his car. All right. Lucas has to move his car? Yeah. Are we going to cut it here for a little bit? I guess we're going to cut it here, yeah. At least for now. Um, so, scope this. Just picked this up the other day. Nice. Good. Good. Um, um, here. It was ten dollars. Ten dollars used. I was pissed, but it was worth it. Yeah. I mean, I just here. Uh, I'm gonna start pulling out mine. I just uh got this. Not sure if you can see it. Drain. Uh, Rotten Sounds Drain. Yep. Their second uh album. Um. Have you ever heard of Vermin Womb? Who? Vermin Womb? Nope. Uh. What's the. Why? We good? What's yeah. the topic? Okay, so. We're talking about uh, music and new releases. So I think it's my turn to talk about new releases I'm excited about. Alright. Yes, from the punk world. And a new punk releases that are happening this year that are also going to be super sick. Um, first off, there's a new record out this year from a band from Spain called Adrenalized, and they are a skate punk band that's like really thrash influenced, and they shred, and there's heavy riffs, but it's like melodic as fuck and super fast, and it's called, um, uh, it's called Operation Exodus. And it's like a super fucking good album, and it's like it's kind of like a concept record about uh, humans going to space, I think, to escape fucking up the whole world, like trying to start anew. Which maybe like the songs, like there are songs kind of about that, but the album doesn't like follow a storyline, you know? Just kind of like a yeah, just kind a of loose theme for the album. Yeah. Um, other than that, this year, in March, we've got the new Masked Intruder record coming out. Finally, five years we've been waiting for a new full length from that band. Years since the last full length. Well, I remember when that first came out, though. Yeah, their second re We started listening to them right before the second record came out, right? Yeah. So, like, like that came out, and I was like, oh, cool, more songs. And then it's just been, like, waiting and uh, I gotta be honest, guys, I was really excited when they announced the album, but the singles do not have me excited because they're kind of just do they whatever. Do single? They have two out right now. Oh, I've only... I think I've only heard their... Uh, uh, no Case? No Case, yeah, that's right. Yeah, what did you think of that song? Uh, it's okay. Yeah, like that's just about all I've got. It's... Uh, the new one's kind of like the new one. I think the new one's better, but it's also like slow. All right, well, I haven't heard it yet, so I can't judge any on that. After this podcast, go look it up. It's called "Please Come Back to Me," and uh, okay, it's just it's kind of slow. It's uh, it's whatever. Uh, new teenage bottle rockets coming out in March too. Stay. That's something I'm actually. Yep, stay rad. So. I'm excited. It's their first, their first uh, full length of originals with the new drummer, so I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Um, so I'm stoked on that. And uh, some older bands that are putting out new shit. New Bad Religion is coming this year. First album in six years. So they, they haven't put out a record since they put out their Christmas album. So I love the Christmas album. I'm really psyched for New Bad Religion. I'm sure it'll be great. I love New Bad Religion. Some people don't. Some people only like the old shit from like the 80s and 90s. I think the new shit's just as good. And uh, New Lag Wagon, which is great because Lag Wagon doesn't really do the whole like melodic poppy punk stuff more because like now they tune to like drop C or like drop C sharp and they have like chunky riffs in their shit. So. I'm excited for new lag wagon because they're kind of more like they used to be. Their early shit was very metallic, and then they became poppy, and now they're kind of going back to like the metallic shit, but it's in a different way. So new lag wagon, also their first record in like five or six years. So shit's going down, man. Hell yeah, man. Um, I know neither of you guys are like really that into punk. 
as much as I am, because like you both are more metal dudes. I, I so I, I'm kind of. I'd say I'm. Well, yeah, I am more metal. Like I still love punk because like. Well, yeah. I love punk to death because like that. That's where it kind of like started with me. Like, I mean, if when I first got into music, it was kind of like through you of like you'd like give me like punk bands like I mean yeah it started with Green Day but then like <laughs> didn't we all yeah but then we kind of branched out like you showed me uh Mast and True their direct hit and like it just kind of you know and then got into hardcore punk and just kind mm -hmm. of from there and then Lucas was the one who introduced me to metal and kind of like I don't know I'm at this weird like I'm not sure where I fall on, like, if I like metal or punk more, or if I'm in the middle. I just kind of think, that, like, you know what, fuck it, they're all just the same thing to me. It's outsider music, so... Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, that that's kind um, of where I fall with it, too, but, like, I don't know. Yeah. But, like, if I was to list my top ten favorite bands, or, like, top five favorite bands, they're probably all going to be punk bands. So I guess it's kind of if you want to think about where you lie on it, you know. A lot of mine are grindcore, so. Yeah, it's actually kind of cool. Like all of us, like in our friend group, kind of have like specific genres that we're like really into. It's like Jared's really into grindcore. Uh, you're really into like uh, like metal and punk and like. Uh, and also grindcore, grindcore, and and a lot of metal too. Luke's the, the Patrick Scott is the jack of all trades. Mm, yeah, I love to jack. <laughs> <laughs> and Lucas is kind of black metal doom, and just kind of and Prague. Prague. Lucas loves his Prague. I, I'm, very aware of that. I'm I'm wearing my uh, hair in a man bun and I have my socks and sandals on right now on my cargo shirts and Hawaiian shirt. And whenever you play, and the underneath game, the Hawaiian shirt is a Primus T-shirt from '93. That's how Prague he is. Oh my god. Uh, and like yeah, so like we all kind of do different shit. So and then like yeah. Sky's really cool. into like uh like Doom and Stoner stuff too. Sky's not mm -hmm. here at the moment, but I'm sure he'll be on the podcast. We'll get him on. We're gonna get everyone Carl. to like a guest on the podcast. You know, I'm pretty sure the podcast might not always be the three of us all the time. It'll probably be like some people getting together. It'll definitely probably be one of you guys for sure. But probably. Um, we have Carl because we, like, we should definitely have Carl. Yeah, he's just right he's across like, the like a mile away. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we got to do that, and we should, like, we need to start, like, um, maybe thinking of some segments to have on the podcast. Like, I think it would be cool to have some segments. I was talking about this with Lucas yesterday where we maybe, like, debate things, you know, talk about metal or talk about punk rock or things within the scene that are going on right now, you know, like, just, like, scene politics, scene news or whatever, you know, like. Yeah. You know, like laughing at the fact that the dude from Anal Cunt fell off an escalator and died. You know, I thought that was pretty funny. I know it sounds horrible, but like... What other way would he, like, go, though, you know? He was, like, harassing a teenager while he was going on the escalator and he was fucking around uh. and screaming at them. And then he fell off the escalator and died. So, I mean, like, that's the most Anal Cunt way to die. Yep. Besides the way Smith Putnam died. Uh. Like, it's kind of like how Gigi Allen died, where you're just like... Of course, Gigi Allen overdosed on heroin and died, and then everyone took pictures with his dead body, you know, because they thought he was just passed out. And he was covered in shit. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's just kind of how it happens, man. Like, you know, scene news. <laughs> scene news. Scene news, yeah. yeah. I also think it'd be cool to, like, um, not to, like, totally rip off Banger Films, so I was talking about this with Lucas yesterday. I think we should try and map out the punk family tree because I don't think that's something that's been done. That'd be kind like of they didn't to do. It'd be an interesting like thing where like maybe on every episode or maybe we could start a YouTube series where we talk about it, you know? Yeah. Um, and like we could try and map that out because I, I uh, metal is very very diverse, and I don't think punk is like the same diversity amount as metal. 
But I think the difference with punk and metal is sometimes punk bands fit into more than one genre more than metal bands do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, it seems like metal bands, like, unless you're, like, bands that totally change their sound over a period of time, Mm -hmm. like Carcass was a grind band, and then they became, like, a melodic death metal band. But, like, No Effects was, like, a skate punk band, but they're also a pop punk band. And so they kind of fit into both of those genres at the same time, or, like, melodic hardcore and things like that. So in punk, the lines are blurred more, I think. Where metal, sometimes it's a little easier to maybe pick it out. But that's just kind of my opinion, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, but that could be like a cool thing too, because I think uh, there's a lot to talk about in punk, of like where shit belongs, like what bands are really crucial in like a movement. Like if we're talking about '80s hardcore, you know, like what bands really defined '80s hardcore? We're probably not going to be talking about, you know. Uh, Michael Jackson or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, like, of course you wouldn't... Because, like, when you think 80s hardcore, certain titles come to mind. That's the whole thing. Like, Yeah, Bad Brains. Minor Threat. Minor Threat. Yeah, stuff like that. Black Flag. You don't think of, like, stuff that isn't mentioned because, well... Yeah, but, like, it'd be kind of interesting to, like, think of that, too. Like, underground bands at that time that aren't exactly noticed. Well, yeah, like Void. Yeah, exactly. Um, Void, or, like, there were, like, there were a ton of bands from them from that time that don't get talked about as much, which is too bad. And I think, um, like, one thing, too, like, uh, pop punk, just in general, like, I want to have an episode where we talk about that genre and the issues I have with that fucking genre of music. I mean, because only if we do that can we have one on deathcore and the issues I yeah. have with that. We'll have like a we can like you can like we'll we'll have debate the validity of like genres or whatever like because like I love pop punk I do, but some of these bands that are newer that claim to be pop punk don't sound like what I would consider to be pop punk. So I just. To me, it's just like warped, warped core. You know, it's on warp tour, so it's just warped core. But warped tour is not a thing anymore. So, but isn't it like not rebranding? Like, what the fuck? What isn't warp tour just kind of rebranding itself into something else now? Though, like, I think it's just gonna become a festival now. Like instead of like a traveling festival, it's. I think it's gonna be like. Oh okay. It's gonna be like they're doing a, a line of dates for the twenty fifth anniversary. But I think next year it's probably just going to be like a festival they do in California, you know, Warped Festival, and they just get a bunch of those scene kid bands to play, like Three O Three and Bowling for Soup. Oh but I think like if we're gonna if we're gonna do like a pop punk episode or something, I think we have to call in like local resident expert Carl Messer on that episode. But say I'm like that's one that Carl has to be in on. So maybe we'll have, like we'll talk about that because like punk, think of like think about how many like different waves of punk and like the subgenres and stuff because you've got like first wave seventies punk, then there's like eighties hardcore which is like you know you got like the you have to talk about like the different kinds of hardcore at that time because there's like there's New York hardcore and like what East Coast yeah. super different than like L A hardcore mm-hmm. and then at the same time like crust punk in the U K yes so, like there's like distinct things that are happening there. And um, same with, like, the 90s. Like, there's, like, different kinds of pop punk. Like, there was, like, Ramones core, because there's, like, the queers. But then there were bands like Blink-182, which are totally different. You know? So, like, there's, like, a lot of different things to talk about. And then, like, we could talk about power violence. And, um, because, like, a lot of times, punk and metal, the lines are blurred. You know? Like, crust punk and crossover, um, metal core, um, a whole bunch of shit like that. And, like, uh... Easy core. <laughs> yeah, there's. I feel like there's going to be a lot, a lot to talk about, like in this podcast's future. But like, I'm excited for it all. I just I need to get organized and like figure out what we're going to do. And figure find a software that can record over ten minutes long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I guess this is probably it.
right? How we're, we're going to edit this down a little bit, obviously. Down oh, a yeah. little bit, but yeah. This, uh, this might be like over like an hour and whatnot, but like... We'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll try and cut out some of the, the stupid bullshit, like the... Yeah. The uh, pause where, where we go, oh, shit, it stopped recording. We can't record more than ten minutes. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah. Is it you guys gonna put this on YouTube? Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah. We'll put it on the basement cult. YouTube I figured page. we'd just like put the static image of like just a static like the basement logo? cult logo and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that'd be kinda cool. Yeah. Yeah, and like put like podcasts in the thumbnail, like basement cult <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Episode one. Yeah. And you know, I think maybe like the first episode's always gonna be like kind of a clunker. Because we're trying to figure shit out, so you know, Hope. maybe on like uh, another episode we'll maybe figure some more of it out. Yeah. So who knows? And we'll hopefully do more planning. It's just nice that we're actually like doing this. Mm-hmm. It's happening. We've talked about doing a podcast for years, Jared. Yeah, me and you. I was years. talking. I was thinking about that yesterday. Like, oh wow! Like, it's actually kind of happening. Like, we've yeah. seriously, like, years. Like, we've talked about doing a podcast since like sophomore year of high school. Yes, we have. Like, that's like five years ago. <laughs> that's crazy to think about, but like, yeah, we've been. It's been on the back burner for so long. So I'm just happy to finally like get going with it, even if it's a shitty get going. Hmm. Yeah. And so, I guess, like, with that, is this the end of the podcast? This is the end. Thank you. uh, We should record. Thanks for listening and listening to our bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, hope you enjoy. And uh, hopefully, in the episodes to come, we'll actually, like, be talking about things that are a little more relevant, a little more interesting, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll talk about uh, music. As opposed to anything else, <laughs> we're going to talk about music. So yeah, uh, well, well, I think like the idea is to like what we're just going to debate shit, debate, shoot the shit about music, shoot the shit about scene politics, exactly. shoot the shit about trends in metal, what's happening in the metal and punk scene circles, talk about other styles of music, you know? Yeah, and you know, just kind of touch all of that. Just yeah, just and we'll have guests on. Um, if the pod, yeah. So thanks for listening, everyone, for the first episode of the Basement Called Podcast. Hopefully it becomes a little more cohesive as we try and work through all of our stupid as fuck issues <laughs> with recording. Yeah. Uh, so what's the what's the saying? Is it like join the cult or something like that? Join the cult. Yeah. Join, join the cult. Yeah. You have to do a blood oath. So uh, cut open your hand and uh, press it onto your computer screen or your phone screen or whatever it is you're listening to this on. And uh, swear allegiance to us. Well, unless you have like some sort of communicable disease like hepatitis, then please don't rub your phone, your blood on your phone. But if you're fine, you're clean, you got good blood, especially you got like that type O blood, mm, rub it on there. All right. Give us your blood. I guess that will end it. Yeah. Can we call?